and welcome back to the channel of nonsense and the inside of a Volkswagen ID4 because it's too rainy to film outside right now and I just want to do the intro. Last year I filmed the ID3 which was Volkswagen's really first all-electric car that was mainstream under their new ID brand and I made a bit of a mistake and I said that was going to be the big car that democratizes electric power because the Golf is so popular but really Nowadays, the Tiguan is more popular than the Golf, at least in my perception. It might not actually be in sales figures because you see Tiguans everywhere and it's become the default family car. Now, the ID4 is really an electric Tiguan. It's that size, it's that SUV type thing with all the space behind me. So I'm gonna give you a walk around, take you for a drive, do a review of the Volkswagen ID4 when it stops raining, which will hopefully be soon because all I've done today is get rained on. There, yeah. Britain. Volkswagen ID4 then, is it any good? Well, this is a £40,800 first edition car. Hasn't got any options on it because you can't put options on these at the moment. You just have to take them as they come in a trim level. I think Volkswagen is going to open up option packs soon. But anyway, this has a 77 kilowatt hour battery, which is good for 310 miles. And you can charge it at 125 kilowatts. I'm trying to remember my facts here. It's got a single motor on the rear axle of 204 horsepower. So yeah, single motor job. You're soon going to be able to get a 52 kilowatt hour battery, which will be cheaper but we'll only be able to go 216 miles. So they are introducing more affordable versions of this, but for the moment, this is what you can get in the UK. Let's have a proper look at it. Now, the ID4 is built on the same platform as the Skoda Enyaq, which I drove a couple of weeks ago, but I think this looks a bit more slab fronted and a bit more fridgy in white, but you've got LED headlights as standard, which is quite good on this first edition car. These are built in a carbon net neutral, net carbon neutral, whatever you want to call it, factory in Zwickau in Germany. And Volkswagen says they're working with their suppliers, people that provide the batteries and the other bits of the car, to make sure they're net carbon neutral as well, with the hope that this will essentially save loads of polar bears. You might have noticed that the ID4 is quite a long, lengthy thing. It's 4.6 meters or thereabouts, and that's actually a little bit longer than a Volkswagen Tiguan. It's slightly shorter than the seven-seater Tiguan Allspace, so it's kind of that Goldilocks bit in the middle. Up front, you've got quite big brake discs. They're one mil bigger than the ones on the new Golf R, but this is 2.1 tons, so you'd kind of hope so. At the back, weirdly, you've got some quite old school technology. You've got drum brakes but they're sealed for life. And apparently the shoes and everything in there never needs replacing. And I guess that's because you've got regenerative braking on the back axle. So hopefully the back brakes will have quite an easy life. But yeah, weird, high tech car, low tech rear brakes. One thing that's worth pointing out as well is the door handles, they're quite big and chunky, but they don't actually move. It's a switch that you pull on the inside of them. So they don't hinge out at all. They're just stuck there but they look like they should move. My brain is confused. Around the back, I think the ID4 looks a whole world better than the ID3, you know, with its big droopy, flappy bum that it drags along the floor like some kind of, I don't know, very ill dog. Um, so you've got an LED light bar and tail light kind of thing across here. You've got a boot, which is... Oh my God. You've got a boot, which is not electrically operated. What the hell? Yeah. Anyway, that's a 543 litre space, which is 40 litres smaller than the one on the Skoda Enyaq. So if ultimate boot space is your priority, then get the Skoda. Also, the Skoda is about 5, 10 grand cheaper than this. Anyway, you've got a space for cables under there um, to keep them out of the boot. It's all pretty big, to be honest. That is perfectly adequate for all of your family requirements. I can't get over the fact this doesn't have an electric tailgate. OMG. Hello, welcome to another thrilling episode of Backseat Chat, where I've got loads of space in every dimension. Headroom, knee room, foot room, it's all good. I've actually got two USB-Cs down here in a cubby hole, and the floor in the middle actually is perfectly flat. So your middle seat passenger, if you take one, won't be going like this or like this. They'll just be happy as Larry. This car's got half brown, half black interior, which looks a bit 
chocolatey at best, being kind there, Volkswagen. But hey, it's better and more interesting than the usual black and grey. You've got a little mobile phone pocket there and another little pocket there. Pretty decent, all told. Well done, Volkswagen. The Skoda Enyaq is pretty much as good though. Hmm. The interior of the ID4 is a bit like the ID3. It's very minimalist. Your gear shift is a little twisty thing up here. You've got a little five inch display for the driver. You've got haptic feedback, fakey buttons on the steering wheel. And you've got Volkswagen's frankly infuriating infotainment system. It's just all together, it's a little bit bland in here, to be honest. Saving grace, you've got armrests like in the ID3, which is quite cool. So you can pretend that you're in a van and a tradesman or something. But the Skoda Enyaq has got a way, way more charming interior with its cloth across the dashboards and its bigger, more useful, more usable screen. This, I don't know, it's a bit charmless and they've put play and pause buttons on the accelerator and the brake pedal. And it just feels a little bit like your sad old uncle buying a fedora to try and be hip and cool. Volkswagen, you're never gonna be hip and cool. Just, you know, I guess do this. It's fine. It's just not very interesting. Obviously it's all nice high quality prodable stuff, but who does that and perverts mostly. I still don't like the fact you haven't got physical volume control there. You've got your driving mode knob here. So you've got eco comfort sport and individual where you can customize chassis, the steering, the drive, the cruise control. This car, as I'm about to say in the driving bit, doesn't have adaptive dampers, this chassis you can switch in Comfort and Sport, that just changes the XTS differentially thing, which doesn't really make a whole heap of difference. Um, but yeah, it's got spinny things. It's annoying, you don't just have menus, you've got this interactive spinny car from which to select all the options. It's okay, it's okay. You've got two USB-Cs down here, big cubby, floating center console, because obviously it's not a central transmission tunnel for any whizzy bits, because there's no motors or anything in there. It's okay. It's okay, right? Anyway, enough about that and me being a bit about the interior. Let's go and drive the ID4 and see if it's any good. Right, bit of a change in my usual driving segment. I'm gonna do a bit of driving around town starting in a car park because the thing about the ID4, you put it in gear like the ID3 by twisting that, is that because it's not got an engine between the front wheels, it's got a turning circle of 10.2 meters. I've deliberately parked in a really crappy space next to a brown Q7, lovely color. And yeah, <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay, so I went, I did 180 degrees in the width of two parking spaces in a massive great SUV. That is actually really impressive. I hadn't tried that. That was the first time doing it. Uh, so it's agile. It is nimble, at least around town. I've got the steering, I think in sport mode. Let me change that, just put it in normal, please. Comfort, there we go. That's better, because these aren't sporty cars. Obviously, not to 60 in 8.7 seconds isn't especially quick. This is the rear motor one, 204 horsepower. It'll top out at 99 miles an hour. But again, it's not designed to be driven like that really. It's just designed to replace your Tiguan and a diesel Tiguan is gonna feel slower than this because it hasn't got that electric punch. Right, let's do a little bit more around town cruising. This has got standard steel suspension. You can get dynamic dampers, they're coming on I think the Max model and the GTX, which is like the GTI version of this. And apparently Volkswagen is going to be bringing some options packs as well in the future. So if you do want an ID4, you can probably choose a bunch of options, which includes dynamic dampers. But yeah, the ride seems fine, to be honest. Unsurprisingly, it feels quite a lot like the Skoda Enyaq because that's basically what it is underneath. Yeah, it's good, it's quiet, it's relaxing, it's hushed. It's therapeutic, almost. I've got a little five inch driver's display. I think I've probably shown you that already, but it's uh, got all the information you need, speed, charge, whether you're taking power or putting power back into the battery. The speed limits, We've got the recognition system, so it's telling me I'm in a 30, and it's got the little adaptive cruise control window to say, hey, asshole, you're really close to the car in front, or you're not close enough. Uh, be interesting to see what the Audi version says. Get closer, get closer, right up his ass. Anyway, where am I going with this? Big mirrors, can easily see out. Pretty good visibility. The C pillars at the back corners of the car are pretty thick. So um, yeah, your view right out the back isn't the best. But you know, generally speaking, it's all right for a modern car. 
and the rear window is a little bit small and a little bit far away but like the Enyaq fits the little rear view mirror perfectly. Let's go somewhere a bit faster and I'll tell you what it's like on national speed limits. Very exciting I know. Can you tell? I'm in my electric Volkswagen going to do some sporty driving. Ugh. Going. So yeah even though it's not fast that instant pickup from the accelerator does help getting out onto a busy roundabout like that. No waiting for a dim-witted automatic gearbox to decide which ratio to put you in, by which point you're halfway into the roundabout and you've crashed going two miles an hour, someone T-bones you and ends your life. But yeah, it feels like a bit of an car, but that's sort of the point, isn't it? A Tiguan doesn't feel amazing in any special driving -y way. You buy it for what it gives you, space and practicality and all that stuff. This kind of follows the same blueprint, really. Right, I'm in a 50 limit, about to go up to a 70 limit. One thing I have noticed about the ID4 is the indicator clip clop is a little bit too quiet. It's like they put velvet shoes on the indicator pony that lives down in the dashboard. Sometimes you can't actually hear that you've got the indicator on. Right, let's see if I can drive like an asshole. Hmm, I was going to say it grips really well, but it got really wet there and the stability control kicked in. Anyway, it does grip reasonably well, actually, and it doesn't understeer until you hit a patch of water like that. This is 70 miles an hour. I'm getting a fair bit of road noise, actually. Getting a fair bit of road noise and a little bit of wind noise off the mirrors, but actually it's reasonably quiet in here. I'm not having to shout. If there's some rattling you can hear, it's my tripod and my caged crockery down there. I always carry my crockery cage with me. Um, yeah, so it would be quite relaxing for long drives. I have to say, though, it wasn't on the same road as this I drove it, but the Skoda Enyaq was quieter, I think, in terms of road noise. I remember that being really impressively hushed, whereas this is just okay. I'm going through a little quaint town on my way to my country roads and I'm slightly reassessing the suspension. It is a little bit, not jolty, but you feel the road, it's a bit thuddy and you sense those 2.1 tons of mass just kind of not particularly being suspended well by the suspension. Can't remember if the Enyaq's better. I don't think it's necessarily better, I think it's just on these less expensive electric cars that are very heavy you can't afford to have such good suspension as you know something like a Porsche Taycan so that you do feel the weight of the car vertically as you go over bumps if that makes sense you kind of feel the thud through your butt we should say that electric cars have not very good butt thud butt thud that sounds like I don't know some kind of weird superhero hello I'm butt thud <laughs> in short then the Volkswagen ID4 is a really spacious, competent family EV with a pretty decent electric range. And at 40,000 pounds, it's vaguely affordable. The only problem I see with it is the Skoda Enyaq, which is very similar underneath, does exactly the same job, but has a more charming interior. And you can get one for five, 10,000 pounds less. So in reality, in the real world where people are spending actual money, you'd have to be a real Volkswagen fanboy or a fan of that badge to buy the Volkswagen over the Skoda. Because for me, the Skoda's actually got some positives. This doesn't, and a slightly bigger boot as well. So yeah, these are gonna sell like hotcakes. Volkswagen already can't build enough of them to sell. So you're gonna see tons of them. And if you want one, if you want an EV for your family and you don't like the Skoda, go and buy one of these and forget all the negatives I said about the interior and just, uh, yeah, good luck with the infotainment system. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit my Hadrian's wall and I will see you next time. Goodbye. That wasn't Hitler salute. <laughs> Goodbye. Ah! Nine, nine, nine.